Hi, I'm Milt of MF Metal Arts, and welcome to another video on basic filigree techniques. In this video, I will be demonstrating the making of various filigree shapes, and you'll be using the wire that I demonstrated in the making of uh, filigree wire video. As always, when following along with me, please observe standard studio safety and hygiene practices. Please do not attempt any of the steps that I'm demonstrating if you are unfamiliar with the safe use of the tools that I'm using. Tools that we will be using in this segment are tweezers. Uh, these are my go-tos. Now, we're going to need flush cutters. These flush cutters are very light, easy to use, easy to squeeze, comfortable. And these are good for cutting up to 20 gauge. And so I use these again primarily for cutting my filigree wire. And they'll pretty much last forever if you don't abuse them. And then the last thing we'll be using is a standard bench block. I typically use a 4x4 four four steel bench block as a surface on which to form my filigree. In making the filigree element, we're going to be focusing on using the filigree wire that we made in the earlier segment on how to make filigree wire. Get our blush cutter, grab the wire, cut a little bit off of it, make it nice and square, clip a little piece off. We'll do that almost every time before we start forming our filigree wire. So I grab my wire, have just that little bit sticking out there, just a little tiny piece, and I turn it make a little loop close it and that's not a bad loop so once we have our loop we're then going to shape this but only just a little bit just clip it off here and so this is what i call a base clef so, so far we have an ampersand a basic base clef and a base clef with a little more curl in it these three shapes that you're sitting here are major major building blocks we're going to take this one, which is very straight, and put it in the middle, and this other slightly curled one. We're going to put them together like this. We call this the water fountain. And now I'm going to show you one other thing that we can do. We're going to do something a little bit different with these. Basically, what I've done is I've put together three pieces of base clef that were curled different amounts and again what I'll typically do then is put just a little bit of solder right here and then I can uh, handle it a little more easily so there you go there's a completed one last thing I'm going to show you for now so I'm going to take another piece of filigree wire and just wrap this around so this is real easy to do wrap it around slide the tool out and there you go and then we can curl it a bit with our fingers or do whatever we want and clip it off. A filigree shape that I like. So now we're going to take a little bit of a closer look at a piece of filigree that I made a while back. And what's inside is the filigree filler. If you look at all of these, these are all just base clefts. There's the head of the base clef, and you can see there that that's soldered shut nicely, and there's the long tail. We'll slide this up, and you can see all the base clefts in there. Here's another piece. It's a little bit less shiny because I've oxidized it. And again, you can see that what this piece is, is it's all base clefts, all of it. There's nothing in here that isn't the base clef. Everything is made out of base clefs. So once again, that very, very, very simple shape is used to make a much more complex looking piece. This one's one of my favorites. It's called Surfing Moon. This one's not made of base clefs. It's made of small ampersands. Another example, uh, also made with, of course, ampersands. And this is my Tree of Life filigree. And again, all ampersands all the way around, yet 
creating this image of a tree. And finally, the last one I'll show you is a piece that's actually in progress. It's going to be part of a hinged cuff. I just never got around to finishing it. And this one is that sort of modified ampersand. In fact, I made that little tool specifically to make this piece. From some very, very basic shapes, we can make many, many, many different styles of filigree. I encourage you to practice making these shapes, and also, I think it would be a good idea for you to look at the work of others and see what types of shapes they use in their filigree.